In this video, we will be covering everything that you need to know when first getting started with drones on your construction job sites. So if you work at a construction company and are looking to implement drones but don't know where to start, or if you are confused with your research and can't seem to connect the dots, you're in the right place. We will be covering the areas of your workflow that could benefit from this technology, whether you should develop your own in-house program or outsource your flights to a specialized drone company, how to successfully create and execute on an implementation plan, and at the end, I'll be sharing some crucial considerations that you must keep in mind when flying drones at construction sites. There are so many industries that are regular users of drone tech, but the construction industry is both the largest and fastest growing market share of drone use within the last few years. Drones provide construction teams with an overhead view of the site progress, materials, crews, and scope of land. Pilots are using them to record images and videos to help optimize everything from grading plans, identifying differences between as designed and as built, and developing valuable project records. Their usefulness can also be enhanced with a wide variety of sensors like thermal, LiDAR, mapping, and zoom cameras. And this type of game-changing data can't be matched by any other form of technology, which makes these devices a new essential component for thousands of job sites. Just like any other technology or service, you must first have a clear vision of what you plan to gain after the implementation and how it would get you a return on investment. Whether it's more clients because of a competitive marketing edge, saving time by developing strategic schedules and reducing unnecessary man hours, or eliminating travel expenses by allowing managers and clients the ability to remotely view the entire site from anywhere. These are just a few examples of the benefits our clients have discovered after implementing this new technology. And if you are unaware of the different ways drones are being used on job sites, I recommend that you watch our previous video up here about exactly how construction companies are commonly using drones. So what you really want to do is locate areas of your workflow that could use improvement and research if drones could possibly resolve those problem areas. For example, you may want to perform surveys quicker and more frequently, or if you're having scheduling issues because the right hand isn't talking to the left hand and you're really unsure of the current status of the site. Now that you've done a bit of research on how drones would benefit and assist in your workflows, it is recommended that you get some real life experience out in the field with this technology. You can bring in a local drone company for a few hours or you can even shadow some colleagues in the industry who already have drones and are familiar with using them. This will give you a chance to ask any questions you may have and also achieve a better understanding of the number of possibilities that are available. So once you're certain of the reasons why your company wants to use drones and you've had some hands-on time, you now have to think about whether you should build an entire drone program yourself or find a reliable and experienced company to come in and use their drones at your job sites. This is something that a lot of people overthink and make mistakes on, so let's break this down together and answer a list of questions that will help you during this decision. For an in-house drone program, the first thing you have to figure out is who will be flying the drone. You may have some techs or other employees of extra time, but more than likely, you need to hire a full-time employee who specializes in drone technology. So once you have someone in mind, there is a lot of material they have to learn. And trust me, there is so much that goes into these things, like studying and passing a test to get your Part 107 license with the FAA, learning how to safely operate a drone and maintain its components, or knowing how to request airspace authorization if your site is near an airport. Another question to think about is how often would a pilot be flying? Do you need a drone flight, say, every few weeks, or do you need it every single day? But if you don't need to fly that often, it might be a good idea to do some number crunching to see if it's more cost effective to periodically bring in a drone professional. Also, if your job sites are far away from each other, you may actually need multiple pilots and drones. We do recommend that you have more than one operator, as if your only pilot leaves the company, then you'll be back at square one with no one who is licensed or available to fly. Next, depending on your company, you may also have to develop standard operating procedures. This typically will include pre-flight checklists, accident reporting, emergency procedures, and training resources. Now, one of the big considerations you have to think about is liability and insurance. Construction is a very safety first mindset industry and you more than likely need specific insurance for flying objects over your sites and liability if there was any accident that could result in injury or death. Our clients have expressed to us that these extra costs and accountabilities were enough of an incentive for them to decide on hiring an outside company. Lastly, we are going to talk about drone models and cameras. Not all drones and cameras are created equal and the model that works best for creating maps usually won't be the best for inspections. 
I can't even tell you how many times that we were brought in after tens of thousands of dollars were spent on equipment that was not even necessary for achieving their desired data. This is just another reason why it is so important to understand what data you're trying to collect before doing anything else. And if you don't know what that data is yet, that's totally okay. I, re I recommend that you reach out to some other companies who've had success or consult with a professional pilot who can explain the different services that are available. Outsourcing your drone flights usually makes sense for smaller companies or for highly technical operations. Professional pilots will understand a lot of the gray areas that you might be concerned about, like flying in restricted airspace, post-processing the data, correct camera and flight settings, emergency procedures, experience with software programs, and more. Then you also have to think about how much money you're saving by not having to train or hire employees, buy equipment, drone insurance, software applications, and spend time troubleshooting. And trust me, as with any other technology, it's great when it works, but it gets annoying and time consuming quick when it doesn't. And drones are definitely not exempt from this. However, please be aware that you really have to do your due diligence when it comes to hiring a drone company. Just like with any other contractors, there are always a handful who seem promising and within your budget, but end up being a nightmare to deal with. A lot of individuals who quote unquote offer construction drone services just bought their drone last month from Best Buy and have never set foot on a site before and will show up in shorts and tennis shoes. Trust me, we've seen it, and I'm sure many of you have watching have too. And then if they create a crucial data set like a map where you plan to pull some kind of measurements from, it can cost you big money if their data was wrong and not verified. This is why you really need to ask friends from other companies, check your vendor list, and ask a lot of questions before signing any contract. You'll want to ask for sample data sets, inquire about previous projects, and get copies of their FAA license and insurance. A lot of this might be common sense to most of you, but we've seen things like this happen too many times and want to make sure that you don't undergo the same experience. Once you have decided if you're doing an in-house or outsourced program, it's time to plan your flights. You'll want to view each phase of the job and plan on how the drone will be utilized and helped during the project. Whether it's going to be a pre-construction site survey with LiDAR, creating weekly cut and fill reports, doing 2D maps for CAD overlays, tracking progress throughout, or the final inspection, drones are able to assist during every phase of the project. We first recommend that you align your flights with the building schedule and especially during major milestones for documentation purposes. With a rough idea of the specific number of data sets and flights that you will be doing throughout the project, you will be able to create an estimated budget. Once you start to fly some sites, you want to determine things like what is the best time to fly without any interference from the ground crew, how long is the turnaround time on data sets like 3D maps and earthwork reports, and who in the project will have access to all the drone data. So before you take off, there are a few things you have to keep in mind when flying at construction sites. First off, you always want to look out for nearby obstacles, specifically at project sites. There can be cranes, trees, power lines, and nearby tall buildings, especially when flying in the city environments. You also want to have a landing pad with cones around it so that no one is injured during takeoff and landing. And before you take off, you'll want to point out safe secondary landing locations in case of an in-flight emergency, so you have a plan of where to go. And many of the workers on the job site may also be unaware that a drone is actually flying overhead because of the often loud environment. Like I stated before, safety is the number one priority in construction, and that's definitely also true when operating a drone. So it's important to keep in mind that everyone around you may not know what you're doing. During flight, you also must be 100% focused at the task at hand and not be distracted by your phone or side conversations. And trust me, the moment that you put that drone up in the sky, everyone on the site is going to go out of their way to find out who's the new kid on the block with the cool technology and ask them about it. I personally love having discussions and interactions with engineers and contractors about this technology, but I always save it until after I land. And the last tip I have for you is to have experience flying your drone in manual mode, sometimes referred to as Addy, where the drone does not have a GPS connection. It's really important to get adjusted to flying with these different settings and controls, as there can often be a lot of magnetic interference at sites that have effect on the drone, as well as signal blockage, especially in cities with tall buildings. So that concludes today's video on how to get started with drones in construction. And if you're interested in learning even more information about these topics, take a look in the video description where I'll be putting a download link for our drones in construction ultimate guide PDF. There is a ton of valuable information in there that I did not cover in this video. As always, if you have any questions at all about using drones at your job sites, you can always shoot me a direct message on LinkedIn. Or if you want us to come out to some of your project sites, 
you can schedule a phone call on our website. But anyways, please hit that subscribe button and like the video for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. Fly safe. Talk to you soon.